Welcome to Current Affairs at Copenhagen Suborbitals. What's happening right now in the Amateur Rocket Project, with the goal of launching a human being into space and bringing him safely back to Earth? Hosted by Jakob Larsen. So, Peter, there is a little additional thing we've been doing lately because, um, I mean, telemetry is imperative for us. We do all the command and control, and it's also our, uh, in case something should go not as expected, I mean, that's where we, we abort the mission and shut down the engine. So quite some time is invested into looking at this telemetry and the, the uplink downlink. Yeah, from the rocket. But we also have a, a, a quite significant uh, Wi-Fi network connecting both uh, Sputnik and Vostok and uh, Vostok and, uh, and land. So that's a pretty special one because we're about 35 kilometers yeah. out to sea. Yeah. And we need to stream all that video back to, to, to our fans and, and viewers, of course. Actually, the 35 kilometers is not a problem in itself. Uh, the problem is that it's moving and we have waves uh, that also give some destructive reflections. But we are testing this uh, with some ubiquity equipment, just upgraded to the latest generation. Uh, it works so far, but we are quite hopeful that it will be better this year. Mm -hmm. We had some problem last year. Uh, the link between Sputnik and Vostok seemed to work uh, nope, without problems, mm -hmm. but, uh, but the, the land link has presented some issues. Okay. So you brought a little, uh, you brought a few pictures here yeah. of, of what this really entails. This is from an afternoon where we tested uh, this link. This is uh, from the top of the BRV building uh, here on the Refsailen. So it's about the biggest, tallest, uh, 60 meter 60 high. meter, I think, yeah. yeah. And I, I know the view from up there. It's quite intimidating when you go <laughs> over the edge. Actually, there's uh, the edge right there and nothing to stop you from falling off. So we are uh, put on the, the harnesses here. This is uh, one of the satellite dishes. That's not satellite, just a dish uh, with a 5 gigahertz uh, link. Mm -hmm. We are preparing for the test. This is going to, we, we, we were supposed to go up the, the coast, mm -hmm. uh, so we could uh, test it over the water. It's, it makes a quite uh, big difference that, that uh, we get reflection from the seawater. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the start of the day we had some problem with this one. Uh, it has a rotor, so it can be uh, turned around. So when we sail, it can uh, track the A AIS position from the ship. So uh, we automatically point the dish exactly. at, at the ships. It, it, it's all automatically. Uh, but we do that in both ends, if I recall yes, correctly. The antenna on, uh, on Vostok is uh, quite simpler antenna. This is uh, a high-gain dish antenna. We can't have that much uh, gain on, the, uh, on Vostok because we don't have a stabilized platform that can uh, point accurate, accurate enough. Yeah, this one is, is bolted to a concrete tower. Yeah, so that's, that's not, not going to move. It, no. it just has to pan around yeah. and get it right. So that, that's going to point within a couple of degrees, so no problem there. Mm. But on, on a moving ship, it's uh, a, a more difficult. You can buy antennas for satellite application and so on that, that can do this uh, very well, uh, very, very well indeed. I think they're a bit outside our budget. Exactly, and they're not made for Wi-Fi purposes. Mm. Uh, it's uh, only made, for, as far as I know, for satellite links. So to, to do this, uh, from land we have this... Uh, parabolic dish mm -hmm. and on, uh, on Vostok we have a smaller patch antenna array and this antenna array is uh, pointed in the azimuth in the direction towards uh, the land antenna and it's uh, actually also automatically pointed so when the ship moves around it will always uh, autocorrect. Mm. From the GPS, it knows exactly where that tower is and points it in the right yeah, direction. Yeah, we, we just put in the, the position for it. I think you brought, a, you brought a picture of that one as well? Oh, I think so, yeah. Uh, you can see it up here in the back. It's actually not a very big antenna. Uh, it's a small P PCB like this. Yeah, but it's a bit unlike the uh, the patch antenna array we looked at for yeah, the rocket. Yeah, but it's a significantly smaller patches. So uh, the size is roughly the same, but but the, each patch is very much smaller. And it's also an unwrapped wrap yeah, around yeah, the antenna. Flat. So a flat one. Yeah. Okay, so so it's a directive panel. And, and if uh, I recall those uh, main lobes from the patch antennas, putting a lot of patch antennas side by side with all the main lobes pointing in the right direction, 
it gives you a pretty good directivity and yeah. then well one thing you should know about this one they are beside each other in the in this direction which means when you have more patches you're going to narrow the angle but if you push it uh, vertically you would have a narrow angle this way but when we are in the waves we can't compensate for the elevation angle yeah so we 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 really squeeze the directivity yeah, in this plane mm -hmm. and then we leave it quite open in the other one for exactly. the waves to move up and down it has a disadvantage that we get quite a lot of sea reflections so that is for the future we are going to figure something out uh, to have a, a really stabilized platform that can compensate for this mm. but that's for future we can't we haven't haven't got enough time right now to do this. Yeah, as if building rockets was not. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, this is also quite a challenge. <laughs> okay. uh, you can see the small transceiver here. We just bought new equipment. So, and uh, this was not that far away. It was about seven kilometers. We took this picture, and that was a very very good throughput. Mm -hmm. But then we also need to get a bit further, and we went. Uh, I can't even remember where, but we were about thirty-two kilometers away and we have the link uh, over water most mm -hmm. of the way and uh, then we could see some of the problem suddenly. So that's surface reflections yeah. and, uh, and it, it get quite destructive when you get down into the angle uh, you just pass over the water. But we actually got a, a link that was sufficient uh, and we had some margin also. Yeah well we have uh, this this is still a very rudimentary setup. I mean there's 60 meters from from the dish uh, on top of the building that's just uh, auto tracking yeah but the tower on Bornholm that's about the same about 70 meters, 70 meters yeah. so roughly the same and then this might just be around the same height above sea level as uh, as Vostok really actually we're going to uh, raise it a bit this year so we are going to get a couple of more meters uh, so so we should have some more the the, the less it, uh, the antenna looks down in the water the better so as high above the Earth's surface as we can get yeah. it. Unfortunately, that doesn't uh, work well with uh, a large uh, opening angle in this direction. So we have some work to do the, in, in this. It would be nice to have a parabolic disk here, but it's also quite demanding for the stabilized platform. It's going to be really entertaining looking at, uh, at Vostok coming at you because I, the antenna is quite high already. And if you yeah. raise it even further, it's going to look like a battleship. Well, actually, we're going to do so we can raise it on the side. Uh, it will be a, a mast that can go up and down. So a flip mast of some no. sort? A telescopic so mast? Well, it's just a mast that we can raise a couple of meters. Okay. It, it will still be quite high when it's down. Yeah, and it's still the highest antenna on that entire ship. If yes, I that, that is look, looking more like a radar than a, <laughs> than a Wi-Fi antenna, but yeah. All right, yeah. So get, just getting that all that video streaming back to land, that's also not trivial. Yeah, and man can see this is the long range link. The link between Sputnik and Vostok is uh, quite uh, easy to do. That's only a kilometer, and that always worked yeah, yeah. perfectly. But all our telemetry commands has until now gone that way to so ignite the rocket. But actually, that's also changing. That's many of the commands are now running through the rocket's telemetry system instead. Mm -hmm. But we're still uh, dependent on on the links between it because we also have a, have a lot of cameras on uh, Sputnik. We need to to see. All right. Well, there's another insight for you. So thank yeah. you very much again. No problem. For further information about Copenhagen Suborbitals and our mission, please go to our YouTube channel as well as our homepage www.corpsart.com. As we're funded entirely by sponsors and donors, we need the support of our many fans to reach our goal of manned amateur spaceflight. You can support us by contributing through the support page.